Now, this video is not a tutorial in a sense. I'm not gonna show you how to make a really cool snow base or really cool like desert base. Think of this as more like a basing 101 or basing theory, an inspiration board that you can apply to multiple projects. Generally, these are just tips I wish I knew before I based my first miniature. Not a recipe to be followed step by step. All right, so the golden rule of basing is to use a diversity of texture for the best looking results. So here's a few things I would recommend picking up to upgrade your basing game. But like everything else in this video, it's just my opinion and a few suggestions from me. Don't think of this as a shopping list and you gotta run out and buy all these things right away. This is something you can gradually build up over time. First off, you're gonna want some glue. I'd recommend a super glue and PVA. Also, some larger pieces of texture, stuff like small rocks, cork board, or large grit sand. They all look great. Old bits from past modeling projects, hold on to them. They make great basing material. Maybe some acrylic caulking. If you can find it, this Vallejo basing texture is basically like basing on easy mode. Otherwise, flocking, static grass, grass tufts, also great basing material. Another thing I recommend picking up is tile ground. This will be a little bit more expensive, but you'll buy one box and pretty much be set for your entire hobby career. And if you're just starting out, or you're on a budget, next time you're outside, just look around. There's literally tons of great basing material just laying around your yard. So don't feel like you gotta break the bank to build up your basing supplies. Now, if you're just starting out and you only got some clay sand or some basing compound, remember, you can add that diversity of texture with your modeling paint. For example, clay sand painted gray could look like a dungeon floor, whereas painting that sand green will make it look like moss. Whereas that purple and blue paint scheme will make it look like some cavern in the underdark. But like I said before, this hobby is more of an art than a science. So your mileage may vary, and at the end of the day, if you're happy with your project, then you've done it right. Another thing to consider is getting yourself a cheap kitchen strainer. This tool can really help you refine your texture palette. Now, I know there's gamers that just like to take the entire base and dip it into a bag of sand and grit and just cover the whole thing and give grit and sand. Personally though, I like to have a little bit more control over what the base is gonna look like. But before I get to the three steps of basing, could you do me a small favor and click that like button down in the corner this is a small click to you, but it means an awful lot to me. By doing this, you're helping me boost the channel and letting me know what kind of content you enjoy. If you want to leave more feedback, please feel free to do so in the comments. This just helps me make better videos for you. It's a win-win. Basing a manager can be broken down into three steps. Now, this isn't something we're going to go step one, step two, step three. These are more like three mindsets to put yourself in when looking at a miniature and its base to make sure you get the best results. You're constantly going to change steps throughout this entire project. And those steps are building, blending, finishing. I really wanted to change that last step to burnishing because, you know, just remember the five D's of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. So first we have building. This is uh, adding elevations to the model and laying out the general composition of the base. This is where you're gonna put down the big bits, probably even the model. It's time for step two, blending. This is generally where we're gonna try to make all those large pieces look like they belong together. The main thing we're trying to do here is uh, cover up gap because nothing says model more than a large gap. If your model comes with a sculpted base, then that's also when you're gonna blend that sculpted base into the rest of the plastic base you're putting it on. And I also feel like using the same basing style can really bring cohesion when you're mixing models from different lines on the same gaming table. This can especially help when like heroic and historical scales are both being represented. During the blending process, we're starting to like push everything together. You can do this with like that basing compound I was telling you about, pile of grout, or even some fine grit sand. Basically anything that's covering up those gaps. We want to look like these things are sitting on the base, not glued to them. Okay. So for the last step is finishing. This is the part where I usually am putting down like my static grasses or my grass tufts. And finally, painting that base rim. Anyhow, 
a few nights ago, I came home from work kind of stressed out. And nothing solves a stressful day like good old hobby time. Now, this one was a little bit different though, because it was more like journaling with a paintbrush, not trying to learn new techniques. I was more focused on clearing my head. So I grabbed some Army Strong Tone and some contrast paints and kind of just vegged out in front of my computer and painted up some miniatures. Now, I think they look great for the tabletop, but when you put them in front of a 4K camera lens, it definitely shows some sins. Another benefit of today's video is I think you're gonna be able to see what simple basing techniques can do to elevate even the most basic of paint jobs. Okay, so I just used plastic glue, super glue, to glue this cultist down. So I then wanted to cover up the pre-sculpted base that's on the bottom of these miniatures. I did that with some Vallejo basing compound, and I just blended the pre-sculpted base in with the circular base I was attaching these guys to. As an added benefit, this pretty much locks them onto the base forever, and they're never going to snap off. I knew I wanted these cultists to not look like they were standing in a sunny, happy meadow, so to make their bases look more hostile, I glued down some cork board, some larger grits of sand, and uh, these little resin skulls. And nothing says sad, gloomy dungeon like a good skull bit. The other cool thing about this Vallejo basing medium is I don't even worry about glue. I just stick these bits straight into the medium and let it dry. The next day after it dried, I wasn't really digging these natural textures. So I decided to uh, paint everything. Now I can hear my old gaming buddy Larson screaming from here. Why are you painting a rock to look like a rock? This really has to do with lighting, but that's a topic for another video. So I started by dry brushing everything that's kind of like lightish gray. I then washed it with some wild wood contrast paint and that made everything look varying shades of black. After that, I decided to go in and pick out some different rocks and details with a red and some grays and some other natural looking colors. I also took this time to paint those resin skulls with the Skeletal Horde contrast paint. After all that dried, I hit everything with a brown black wash to pull everything back in and make those stones look really dirty. I then decided to add some static grass, but like I said, I wasn't looking for a sunny meadow for these guys. I went with the step grass from Army Painter. I think it gives it a kind of like a nice sinister look to the old world model. Then the last bit of blending I did was I piled on some tile grout. This tile grout will seep down between the static grass and really make it look like the grass is coming up through dirt and definitely gives a more barren and patchwork look to the overall base. I used a black gray tile grout for these bases to really run home that dingy look. Once that was done, I just tapped off the side of the base and finally painted that base rim black. I find that I get a really good recipe for painting base rim. Black acrylic paint, black ink, and a satin varnish. But since I'm mixing black ink to water down my black paint, I'm not sacrificing any of the paint's opacity. And that means I can paint this smooth base rim that dries extra hard, as the side of the base is gonna be a big contact point during the gameplay. Then the last step, you're taking these guys out and hitting them with matte varnish. So here's the cultists all based and on their new homes. I hope you agree that this basing really did elevate these miniatures to a much higher level. Even if it's just a slant dash veg out paint job. Let's start at the project. If you'd like to see more shots of my work, be sure to follow me over on Instagram as I post a lot more photos there. And even photos of projects that don't quite make it into videos. I'm Dave. This is Table Ready Gaming, and until next time, good luck storming the castle.